What happened? Why Chad is banned? No warning? Nothing? And they just banned Chad? What is this? We're paying money for this game, and they're silencing us without warning? No need to disable chat, and with no reason, and then have mods disable messages too. Not entirely comfortable with the idea of being banned from chatting, because some individuals decided to create chaos in the chat following recent events in Northern Europe. Why are we all banned? Can the mods just ban those who are causing the aggro? Maybe this may help with the future global ban decisions. Article 33 of the Geneva Convention. Individual responsibility, collective penalties, pillage, reprisals. No protected person may be punished for an offence he or she has not personally committed. Collective penalties, and likewise all measures of intimidation or of terrorism, are prohibited. Pillage is prohibited. Reprisal against protected persons and their property are prohibited. Are private corporations exempt from the collective punishment laws? To be honest, on my bingo card, I didn't see somebody bringing up the Geneva Convention because of the War Thunder chat being removed uh, on on it. it. It's just, my God, uh, we live in very interesting times nowadays. Um, so, uh, what has gone on? Once again, chat is gone in War Thunder, or at least it was yesterday. Maybe it's back today, who knows. Um, but pretty much like this, when patterns are... Patterns are very, very useful for a human being um, because patterns can tell you a lot of things, not just about how people will react, but also uh, how to plan kind of for the future. And since uh, this stuff has been going on for a while now, uh, when it comes to War Thunder, them removing chat or bringing it back, uh, back because of certain things going on, uh, basically... It's very easy uh, to work out why stuff like this has happened and why uh, it keeps happening. So the first time chat was removed for a decent amount of time was when Russia invaded Ukraine. And uh, this is because, as always, um, people use War Thunder not just uh, as a video game, which they should, by the way, they also use it as a way to LARP, and it sucks. It's been that way for a long time. Um, there is a lot of armchair historians, there is a lot of armchair generals, and they use the game as kind of a way of being able to push forward their ideals. You can see this in simply on the forums all the time, or Reddit, or even just once again in the in-game chat. And this means that a lot of political talk goes on when it really shouldn't, since it's a video game, uh, not a political forum or anything like that. And also, there are strict rules against it. So it just explodes every time. They brought chat back. At the time, I said chat was pretty worthless. They didn't need to. I still hold by that, by the way, especially now that we have the targeting uh, thing, uh, so you can actually tell when air alerts are coming in. I do think it would be good to expand uh, the general messages that you can send teammates, you know, whether it's like attack the cap or, you know, defend this area. I think that'd be really nice, and I'm sure they will do as they go forward. But the idea that chat is this monolithic thing that makes the gaming experience incredibly amazing, 99% uh, of the time, it's useless. I'd, I'll tell you exactly where the chat is used the vast majority of the time. Used in aerialistic when people are struggling with ADD and they have to type something in it while they're climbing or while they're going to an engagement because there's that one or two minute area where, oh no, nothing's going on. So therefore you have to fill it with something because your brain just can't handle not doing something for two seconds, which is a worrying trend, by the way, in general, not just in War Thunder, but in society. Then, the next part is in Naval EC, uh, when, once again, there's not really a ton of downtime, and there's not a lot of stuff going on. When is chat useful? Um, basically, 1-5% to 5 of the time, when people are typing in it, you know, oh, person is here, 
or hey you can push this and we can help it out but usually chat is pretty much worthless and people just use it to spam either um, derogatory things or political things or just worthless things I think is more uh, part of it so yeah it's usually not um, that useful so whenever it gets removed obviously there will be people who are sad about this because they like using it they like talking to people so on and so forth but you have to understand why this happens and you don't have to agree with it but it has to be understood the simple fact is if you stop people uh, if right this is how we solve this issue completely and this is something that we've talked about previously so you get people to read the terms of service. You get people to read the rules of War Thunder and what you are and what you are not allowed to do. Okay? So that's step one. I've been trying to do that for 11 years now. 10 or 11 years. Uh, that's an impossible step um, because, I don't know, people just don't like doing it and it's really weird. So that's uh, a kind of uh, the Mount Olympus you have to get up to. So that's number one. <laughs> Number two, you have to have accountability for these things, which, you know, there are systems in place uh, to be able to do that, you know, to be able to actually push people um, into like getting chat banned and things like that if they decide to be a little bit, a little bit crazy. Um, and the problem with this is you can't really do it. Um, because you can't do it on a on a big enough uh, kind of scale, uh, because it has to all be done individually. As somebody who's dealt with forums on the internet for a while now, um, individual bans instead of collective stuff are very hard to sort out. So usually it's sometimes just better to remove the whole thing for a bit, let everything calm down, and then move on You know, from uh, that. It works very well, actually, which is why most companies do it. So you've got to somehow do those two things in tandem. And even if you do those two things in tandem, you are never going to be able to uh, actually fix the whole issue and people are just going to keep coming back and keep doing the same things over and over again because they just don't either read the rules or just disagree with them and then you get the free speech people that's always fun and um, the at the end of the day gaijin is a private company they don't need uh, or don't offer free speech uh, that's not how this stuff works once again if you're worried about that stuff please to talk to your local uh, Congress person or local politician and uh, maybe in five to ten years uh, they can send you a response saying oh well that's unfortunate and then you can move on from it um, at the end of the day they're not stifling your free speech by making it so you can't type in a video game um, that is a very interesting idea and um, that's kind of been put out around the place at the end of the day it's containment right it's trying to reduce the amount that they're going to have to deal with in the future and also to not give people ammunition to go after them for things that aren't their fault and as we've said before when it comes to gaijin and when it comes to hit pieces and just silly things that have been said over the years there's been a mountain of them and most of them are just completely worthless but they're there because they can rage bait people and i completely understand their stance on these things i don't like the fact that the chat has to be removed i don't think it should be removed i don't think it fixes the issue at all uh, i kind of like the idea of shining light into darkness but from a company point of view it makes complete it makes complete sense why give people ammunition to go after you especially when you know there are certain bad actors that will always push specific narratives makes much more sense just to close doors for a few days let everything blow over just like everybody else does by the way and then move on from it and then there's always the cause well why do they do this for you know these events you know the the attack in moscow or why do they do this for for other ones but not these other ones because certain events in the world affect specific parts of the player base which are a bit more rabid than others that's pretty much it simple as that there is no other reason it is just a level of scale right and it's it's just that i don't know how else to put it i think it's good that they're doing preemptive stuff though instead of reactive stuff i think uh overall when it comes to those things that's very positive 
And as always, hopefully we can just get it back soon and we can just forget about this happen again until the next time. I did see a lot of people saying that they didn't even remove the chat when the invasion of Ukraine started. Uh, they did, actually. Um, so please don't be Mandela affected. Uh, <laughs> it's it's an uh, interesting time as always. Look after yourselves. Peace be with you. Bye-bye. I'd like to thank Schnitzel Stroker, Brendan Quinn, Vilnaeus, Character Fuel, Carrion Crow, Nicholas Richardson, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Wartinder, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, B. Young, Opium Prime, Masonocrats, Lafouche, Alan Hacker, Sam Arslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R. for supporting the channel.